Hello, my name is Jason. He is Monty. And today we're doing Bible chat on Luke chapter 11, verse 2 through 4. And I'm going to read it in the King James Version first. And it says, And he said unto them, When ye pray, say, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven, so in earth. Give us day by day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Now I'm going to read it in uh, what I read it in basic Bible English. It says, And he said to them, When you say your prayers, say, Father, may your name be kept holy and your kingdom come. Give us every day bread for our needs. May we have forgiveness for our sins as we make free all those who are in debt to us. And let us not be put to the test. And a little bit of context beforehand. It says, Now this chapter is very important because it begins with Jesus and he's just finishing up praying. And all of a sudden, his disciples just run up and they're like, Jesus, can you teach us how to pray like John taught his disciples how to pray? And he's like, okay. And this is what he tells them. He basically, this is what we now call the Lord's Prayer. And you can talk a little bit about that. Awesome. What I did when I read this, I, uh, when I first, I, I won't say when the first time that I read it, but it was about a couple of weeks ago, and I read this, and the, the word hallowed stuck out in my mind. And I started studying into that, and uh, I began to break down each part of what Jesus says here. And this is basically what I believe he was telling us to do. Now, hallowed means to make holy in your mind. I wish I could remember the original. Yes, I, I wish I could remember the original Greek word now, but I don't, probably because I don't speak Greek. That's appropriate. But, uh, so hallowed be thy name. We have to come to him with a mindset of praise. Thy kingdom come. So let us play, pray for revival to further the kingdom of God. Pray for souls that are lost. Yeah. Uh, thy will be done. Pray for guidance in your daily life, just as the angels in heaven. Our daily bread, we need to ask for the necessary needs. Now he's ready. You mind if I take this real quick? Go ahead. It's really interesting. Sorry to interrupt you there. Uh, it's really interesting that this is in here uh, because it just sort of seems like it was just inserted, which, and I believe it was done so for a reason. He doesn't just say, give us every day bread. He says, give us the bread that we need for our daily needs, as you said. That's interesting. That means that you won't always get uh, excess, but sometimes you will just get just enough to sustain yourself. As it says in the basic Bible English, yeah. give us every day bread for our needs. Mm -hmm. I, I like that. It, it basically not only our food as when we take it literally, yes, but you know, but allegorically, our spiritually, our, yes, all of that. Whole spectrum. All right. Forgive our sins as we forgive those who have sinned against us. We need to ask for forgiveness, but also grant forgiveness to those who have wronged us, and lead us not into temptation. Now, this one, this one again, asking God to guide your steps so that you don't walk into temptation. And to resist temptation. Now deliver us from evil. This one, all I wrote in my notes here was repentance. This is very I interesting. I don't know where yes. from. He said to deliver us from <clears throat> evil. Now we're praying for deliverance. We know that faith without action is dead. Yes. But we're having faith that God will deliver us okay. from evil. When we repent, we say, God, I'm sorry. We did earlier, forgive us our sins. As we forgive. I got you, I got you. Okay. And then we say we need to turn away, deliver us from the sins that we were bound to. Okay. Uh, now, the meaning for me, I believe that this is instead of it being a script as it is preached in a lot of churches across the country and as it is sometimes read, it's just the prayer that you're supposed to pray if you're a Christian. I believe that more than anything, this is a formula that we use. We take each of these single verses and we treat them as ideas and concepts that we should use in our own prayer life uh, to help further our spiritual lives. And because, of course, the Bible tells us in Matthew 6 that we should not just use vain repetition because he says that's what the heathen do. He was talking about the Pharisees who just, who they prayed loud, big prayers, not to be, you know, not to pray to God but because they wanted to be seen of man and, you know, somebody to say, Oh, look at them. They have such a good spiritual life because they pray so loud. And then also we know that in, I believe it's Philippians, it tells us that we don't just need to repeat things, but we need to pour our heart out to God. So I'm not telling you do not read this, uh, the Lord's Prayer. If you have it in your heart that it is pure 
and that you do just want to say this to God from a pure heart, of course say it, but don't just say it because it's written here and that this is the Lord's Prayer. So that's what I wanted to bring across. Yeah. Anything, Lassie? Not that I know of. Okay, so uh, sorry for running a little long on our last few videos. Don't know what happened to me and him have gotten a little long-winded. Uh, so with all that said and done, uh, yeah. my name is Jason. He is Monty. Signing, Signing off. off.